Well, it's Friday afternoon, it's 2.26. Um, it's the eve of the grand final, so we're going to do a special edition of the full 80 minutes preview of the grand final. Been an unbelievable week, it's been an unbelievable playoff. Uh, playoffs, uh, have the top two teams got in the final uh, on form at the moment? Yes, over the season, probably not. Uh, but Leeds are, are Leeds are in form, but we're going to try and help you with... First of all, naming the squads, and we're going to try and get some, uh, you know, opinions, uh, get some good comments coming in, and we'll do a, you know, backlog to it. But first of all, uh, I'm not going to do a drum roll, but we'll we'll do one. And apologies again about Mick. Uh, I think he's got a few things going on as Michael at the moment, so wish him well and hope him back soon. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy Max, uh, I think he's on the tennis court as we speak, so we're down to me and Joe me. <laughs> so here we go. We've got St. Ellen's 21 man squad Jack Wellsby, Tommy Mason, Willow Party, and Mark Percival, Johnny Lomax, James Roby, Matty Lees. And I'm terrible in, in names to pronounce Tione Matautia, Joe Batchelor, Morgan Knows, Joey Lussick, Lewis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, Curtis Sirinan. Uh, oh, God, this is a good one. Agnatius Parsi. Agnatius Parsi. I'll do that Jake one Winfield, you. James Bell, Josh Sims, Ben Davis, Conrad Hurrell, Dan Norman, John Benison. Leeds, Liam Sutcliffe, Ashan Lee. Wow. Blake Austin, Mikhail Aledsky, Cruz Leeming, Matt Pryor, James Bentley, Rhys Martin, Zane Tatavano, Brad Dwyer, Richie Myler, Cameron Smith. Bodin Thompson, Tom Briscoe, Sam Walters, Jared O'Connor, James Donaldson, Moise Mustafa, Liam Tindall, Jack Sinfield, and Zach Hardacre. Wow. Yep. Wow. So what we're going to try and do first off, I think, we'll throw it into, is to pick two teams we think is going to be the starting selection. So I, you know, starting with Saints, I think we can say that we think Wellsby's going to play fullback. You're looking funny, what's Matt? <coughs> yeah, it's a very good, <laughs> a good statement of saying Wellsby's playing fullback. Wow, so you don't think they'll go Wellsby in the halves? No, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I think fullback. I think fullback, they might exchange him into the halves, but I think he'll be the starting fullback. Who, who would you have as fullback on that team? Well, I think they'll play Jack Wellsby at half, and I think they'll play William Aparte at fullback, Joe. That's the way they'll go, but you you think not? I think we've got Tommy Makinson, who is his definite starter. Yep. Uh, we're going to talk about Willa Party. I put him at fullback. Joe hasn't. I got him at wing. Yep. And then we've got uh, the other centre. Now this is interesting. Based on this, they've got Josh Sims. God. Josh Sims, and then or will they play Bachelor like they did in the in the semi final? Will they play Bachelor at centre from the second row? Um, I yeah, I think they will. So we're going Bachelor. Um, then we've got uh, Sione. Sione is back in the second character row, who we played. Who we played uh, played golf, golf with? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, then we're looking at wow, uh, who's the other back rower? Do they go Knowles thirteen? Um, you know what? It's actually getting harder. James Bell. Ah, now, now now we've got Conrad at centre. So the way they've done the squad numbers here, we'll go Conrad centre. So we'll play Batch back row. We'll play Sioni back row. And then we've got Morgan Knowles, 13. We've got, I've got Wellsby at six, along with Johnny Longmax. And then we've got the front row of Curtis Sirinan. Are oh, you playing in back row off the bench? Uh, off the bench, I believe. It'd be Scarsbrook, uh, Parsi and Parsi and uh, Matty Lees to start. Matty Lees to start. Uh, wow, what do you think, Joe? Is that is that you know you look at that now, just talking out loud and trying to do the Saints bit first. You know, Saints' form without by, without the bias, the show me bias on Lewis Dodds. We've done the stats when when Dodds plays. To when Dodds doesn't play, it's a massive drop. Um, you're looking at the halves. If it is, the only other option they've got on the half would be to play. Well, they're not going to risk Roby at half, are they? No, 
No. Who would they play at the wing then if not Hapoate? Who's the Well you don't have to now you can put we we can we can play Conrad at centre. Yeah. Um and put Hapoate on the wing, and that's what I think they're gonna do. We, that that still leaves us without an half to, to partner uh, Lomax. It has to be Wellsby. Well, then who's, to go, be. who's going full back? A party. You just said winger. No, no, I'm going to put... Words no, right. no. You just... no, no, you're doing that thing again. I'll, I'll name you back five and this will help you. Ready? You didn't, you didn't replay what you just said. You we, just said up a party hey, winger. Will it, will it, well, we're going to all centre. Will a party full back. <laughs> Tommy Makin, some Matt Percival. Conrad Hurrell. Yeah. That's my three. And my fourth... You know what? Are they going to have just thought? Are they going to play the young kid? Ben Who's Davies, maybe. No, it's Benison who's been playing. And Davies. No, Benison's Davies been playing fullback. So we're, are they going to play Benison fullback? Anyway, that's that's part of the debate. I've just thought, and, and sorry on Benison, he's actually been playing out of his skin. So they could put Wellsby at half and keep a party on the wing with Percival, Conrad, and Tommy as a back five. And play the young man. Wow, well, that'll be a massive call. Young Benison at fullback at, in a grand final in his first year in, in the game. Saints fans, please put in. Please all comment if Sam can get this out before tomorrow. Put as many opinions as you can in. Um, and we'll try and get the, the you know the, the team read out and, and see what we can well, do. What's the bait? What do you think? What do you? Th- I like Opoarty. I like him. I personally like him as a winger. I like Wellsby as a fullback. I think he's strong, athletic, a tough run- runner. But they I can't afford Wellsby at fullback. They've got no other half. That's the big. That's the big choice. But then no, they need a choice. Look, there's not a choice if you put your team up. There's, there's just not a choice. There is no other half apart from Roby and play at half. You won't risk it. There's no other half in that squad. Ah, uh, Joel, Not see it, and then come to it in about ten minutes and said, "Dad, you're right." Well, you're the only one. <laughs> I, I think that I don't know. I don't know. Answer, great answer. He doesn't know. Um, so I think on that one, uh, good debate, though, son. Good I like debate. it. So we've got the leads. And this hopefully should be easier, even though I can see a couple of uh, debates in here. So we've got fullback Richie Myler. And I'm just looking for Richie's name here. We've got it. We've got yeah, Myler's massive. Ash Handley's back in the squad. Massive for Leeds. Absolutely huge for me. The I think Ash Handley, um I think Ash Handley coming back could be the saviour for Leeds. I'd say they were struggling without Ash. I think, the, in my view, they'd really struggle for yardage. Ash is, as probably most people who watch the show know, Ash is, I think, the top yardage maker in uh, Super League or he was at parts this season I think he might end up being the top yardage man uh, per game in in Super League he's been brilliant that's what that's what he's there for Leeds to do he's, a, he's really improved that side of the game and he's made that his he's made that his his top strength other than his attack which has always been brilliant obviously his speed but now he's got a, a brilliant yardage game that I think without it would Leeds get in the right positions on the pitch to really to be able to beat Well, Saints. they did in the semi. They did in the semi. Yeah, I know they did in the semi, but that was against Catalan Dragons, wasn't it? So it was a... Well, Catalan's away. It's not a difficult fixture. No, but it's just, they're much slower than Saints are, in right. my opinion, I think, because Catalans are slower. Leeds scored a lot of tries, apart from... Apart from <coughs> Jared O'Connor going from dummy half. They scored a lot of tries, actually, from from what they've been doing on the second, third play deep in their own half. I don't think they get away with that against Saints. I think Saints' defence is too tough, too strong, too fit and get up and at you quick enough to where I think they need, I think Leeds need yardage to have a chance in this and I think that Ash coming back I, will provide that yardage. Yeah, I think it's not so much that, I think it's stopping the yardage of, of Saints but we'll go on the other side, we've got the big debate for the Leeds fans. Do you stick with Young and, and show me also? Why not debate? Let's go and debate We'll it, debate then. it afterwards. We'll go through the teams and then we can go there. So we've got a young Liam Tyndall against a very experienced Tom Briscoe. It's probably the biggest call of Rowan's uh, grand final so far. So, you know, you've got Tyndall or you've got... It's one or the other. 
I'm on Liam Tyndall, and I'm biased, and I don't mind to be. That's the way it should be. Well, I think Tyndall has been preferred for most points this season. I think. No, I think he's played seven. I think Briscoe would without injury would have played. Briscoe's been playing centre. He's been playing different mm. positions. Briscoe, hasn't he? I think Tyndall, when he's played, has been. He's been obviously been really good. He's he's had some he's had some mistakes, but as young players do, you learn from them, you develop. And I think in the last game, especially in the semi final, he played brilliant. So your answer is Liam Tyndall. Right, then you've got centres, which we think Liam Sutcliffe's a shoe in. Probably yep. the form centre. It'll be a great one, a great battle, but we'll go through that afterwards. We'll pick some battles out. And then while we're going, the other centre would be on this. Would it be Reese Martin? I don't think they've got another option. It's Unless they play Briscoe. If they go Tyndall and Briscoe. I think that's what I think that's highly I think that's wow. I think that's strongest case. I think that's what they'll do. It's what they've done it quite a few times this season. So you're putting Reese Martin and James Bentley as back rowers. Yep. And then we go Cameron Smith. Thirteen. Maybe. Now this is the big one. We go Cammy. Does Cammy go thirteen? But then we've got at halves we have Blake Austin. But unfortunately, because of an head uh, no. testing, we've got no Caesar. So who, who out of this place six? Well, there's only two options Leeds have got. One has to be Cam Smith at that position. The other, do you play Zach at fullback and put Richie Myler there? Thoughts, Joe? Um, oh, Zach will be the centre. What we're saying, we just yeah, yeah. So instead of instead of Tom Briscoe, Zach's going to be centre. Yeah. Um, no, I think I can't believe yeah. I'm a bit slow, I'm a bit ill. Zach's at centre, I think. Richie Myler at, uh, at full-back and Cameron Smith, I think, will probably play half unless he's willing to take the risk of a lifetime, which probably... Un- what, bigger risk than playing Myler at half than Cam Smith, who's played 300 not, times at half? I've waited for what I was going to say. Wait for the biggest risk of a lifetime. Look who, who's the other half in the team. There's another half in the team. Would they do it? As no, they're not going to play young Jack. Not going to play no. young Jack, that's the other half. So no. If they're not playing young Jack, I'd say you'll go Cammy Smith, and I think he'll, I think Rowan really likes Richie Myler at full-back, so I reckon that's what they'll do. So if we go with Zach Centre, then we go Reese James Bentley, and then they've got the hookers. At the moment, he's playing you know, a sensational uh, young man who I've got a lot of time for, Jared O'Connor, uh, who's actually earned the right to play in that position, and then he's bringing off... He's bringing, so you, you've got the other one, you play Cruz off the bench, there's no place for Dwyer. That's what they've done in the previous two playoff games, I can't see it changing, it's and then worked he's, for Owen. Yeah, historically he's got Donaldson on the bench, Bodine on the bench, Sam Walters on the bench. Who's going to be 13? We've not answered Well, it, if you go 13, if you're going Cami 6, you'll put a prop there, Joe, I think they'll put. Now, this, Saint is, Savano, this is interesting, because looking at the squad there... You've obviously got the showing up props is Mikuletsky. Yeah. The showing up props is now this is going to be so interesting. Matt Pryor, Tevano, and then are you using Bodine as your fourth prop at the moment? Yes. That leaves you Walters, Donaldson. The the bench looks, and this is you know, the bench here. There's Walters, Donaldson, Cruz, and then you've got one other. Now that's one other from, wow, 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 this opens it right up. So that's one other from Muzzy, Jack Sinfield, and we're looking for one more, which would probably be actually be Reese Martin, wouldn't it? If if they don't go back row, we've got Bentley and Reese Martin back row. Oh, wow. There is some major talking points there. Because how would you, if you're not bringing off props and yardage off the bench, that means Leeds are going to have to make that first squad they put out, the starting lineups. there's so much pressure on them. Because if you look at Saints' bench, bench alone, even if we get it wrong in one or two areas, Saints' bench looks more of an impact, especially in the forwards than that Leeds are going to be. Yeah, I think that's why I think... That's why I made such an emphasis of saying I think they need the yardage with Ash Hanley and that, because it'd be tough. I think the props... I think Big Mick can challenge with the the Saints. Can can Zane come up like he has a couple? Of, you know what I mean. Zane has some very good games this season. Can Zane have a brilliant game? Can Matt Pryor wave his? Well, he's not retiring, but can he have one? You know what I mean. Can he have another good game in him? I think they'll need, like you said, they'll need a they'll need a special 
They'll meet, I reckon they'll play Sam Walters on the bench. They'll start Zane at 13. Put, I reckon they'll go big Zane, Mick and Matt Pryor. And I reckon they'll try, handle them in the... Try <laughs> do big... I reckon big Mick's going to do big minutes. Well, if, if Brad don't play, and let's say Jack Sinfield don't play, that leaves Muzzy against probably Bodine for the yeah. other place. Yeah. And at the moment, they're going to choose Bodine based on that and, and play, play Muzzy at 18th man, which he's done a couple of times this year. Yeah. Um, some big calls there for everybody, and please get your teams in. If, if we say if Sam can get this out, please put your teams in, see if we can get some correct answers on this. Uh, and then it's all to play for. Right, Joe, let's switch straight away to... I'm going to pick some little battles out and let's, we'll get into it. So, first of all, the first battle I'm going to pick out is Christian Wolf. V. Rowan Smith. Uh, <laughs> that is a uh, so just, just, of a just a little battle. Just a little bit of background on it is obviously this is Christian's, and I, and I need to get this record straight. Mick's brilliant to all this, and I'm usually the one who comments, but I think it could be his third grand final on the trot. Yeah, it They've is. won the other two. This could Fact. be his third. Fact. This could be history. I think maybe Mac did it. I don't know if there's a year in between. Please correct me if not. So the, the, this is a tried and tested coach. Who's, you know, who's been absolutely unbelievable over the last three years since he took over uh, as the head coach of Saints against somebody who was only ever coached before this at Queensland level and at Bradford level. He's been involved in the game at first team level, but as a head coach, he's came into a club which was absolutely, you know, down on confidence. A lot of internal problems, a lot of outside problems. The squad looked over the place. And he's resurrected one of the biggest clubs, if not one of the biggest clubs in the world, if not the biggest. I've heard on the Great Van it's going to be a sellout tomorrow. Yeah, everyone's raving about sense. it, and it is unbelievable. If you'd have said to me one month ago Leeds were going to be the grand final against Saints, and I thought you were absolutely, as they famously say, you do, you do your own art. <laughs> yeah, you you wouldn't have you wouldn't have believed it. So. They're in the position, Joe. Does it make a difference, uh, the experience of Christian against Rowan, who's got no experience? Well, as a head coach, by the way, Rowan, I know you watch this. I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to say as a head coach. I know you've got your family steeped in grand finals. Your father, historically your father, who, who, you know, who got, I think it's probably four or five grand finals, but I didn't think won one. Tony Smith, your uncle Tony, who I think won a couple of grand finals at the club you're at now. But again, I'll state again against somebody who's done it, seen it, and got the T-shirt. Joe, does it make a difference? Uh, historically, I think you'd say yes. I think it does make a difference because it's... I think grand finals, you need to know how to win. You need to know how to play that specific pitch. It's a, it's an interesting pitch, and it? it's very small goal line area there's little things the atmosphere I think Christian's done it now twice he's been part of the Saints the legendary Saints team that might be the greatest of all time if they win tomorrow probably will go down as the greatest team of all time well, I'd, I'd argue that I'd say <laughs> yeah, Le- Leeds 89 yeah, yeah. but I'd say arguably the best team of all time and I think that you've got to say that counts for something not not disregarding how good Roan is as a coach for what he's done at Leeds he deserves he deserves every medal in the book, but I think in that in that big game, Christian Wolf has been there twice now. He's entering his third. He's hungry. He wants to leave. Flick the hat off, and he's he'll leave an absolute legend if he pulls it off for a third time in a row. No, well, that's obviously the deal. Was that Christian? I believe in Saints reportedly after the end of the season uh, conf- confirmed now in a coaching yeah. job. I think it's with Wayne Bennett as assistant. At the newly formed club, Joe's just looked at me funny. Is it not that? I don't think so. No. Sam, could you find that out where Christian Wolf is, please? Uh, and apologies if we've got that one wrong. He's going somewhere as a head coach, and I think. Right there, you go. Um, so, so you know, have your own opinions on that. My my opinion on that is, it, I have a feeling Rowan being the anorak, Rowan being the anorak he is, and being around the family and being around the, you know rugby since he's been a young man. Probably, uh, it was very emotional after the semi-final uh, when they beat Catalans. If anybody saw his interview, I thought the first time I saw him show emotion. Now, I think that emotion's not a bad thing going into a grand final. I don't think it's as bad as what we think. I think it's um, 
fantastic to to have. I think the lads see a human side of Rowan and they see another side of him. He's, he's a very positive man. He's very intellectual on coaching. You know, he's a, he's a student of rugby league. But I love the bit he showed a bit of emotion as if to say, I can't believe this is happening. His family's been come over. He's, he's in a final. The Smith legacy could carry on. And I think the, it'll actually work in his favour. My debate on both clubs is probably the two, along with Wigan, you could say three of the greatest clubs to ever ever play Super League. You know, well, that's probably undoubted now. Bradford were the other era. Uh, I would say this is two of the biggest clubs going gunslinging at each other. I think Saints, if you started now, I don't know what the uh, the bookies are giving, but I would say it'd probably be minus eight. Sam will find that out. I would say minus eight to Saints. So Leeds will have eight starts. I think the only thing that Leeds have got against them is, you said emotion isn't some t- it isn't a bad thing. I'd argue sometimes it is in the big stage because Saints are expected to be in this grand final. I think all season they've been expected to be in the grand final. Was Leeds' grand final making it here? Was it winning that semi-final and proving everyone wrong? Everyone at the start of this, it was it wrong? Have they have they hit the highs? Because it was outpouring of emotion. Sometimes from there comes an emotional drop, and I don't. But know. they played playoff football for last eight week, as they've said historically. They played last four games. If they didn't win, they wanted playoffs. If they didn't win, they wanted. So how lost. draining it sometimes that. Well, I, 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 I the, emo- the emotion I, I hear in the players, there's no draining at all. You know, sometimes you don't hear it, do you? I think sometimes historically, many sports show when you've when you've pulled off this underdog story, I think there's, there's normally a final hurdle. I think that's probably why I'm gonna go Saints as your as your grand final winners. Oh, we're gonna throw it first and then do that at the end. I don't know why you've dropped that bomb in yet, but that's because uh, it just fits my. It's a little bit stupid, but anyway, it fits my argument. Right, okay. So we think Saints will be minus eight, uh, the favourites. Sam's gonna find that out. Um, and we think Christian Wolf is on the way to uh, thinking of Brent. Yeah, Christian Wolf's going to the Dolphins. Yeah, Wayne Bennett's assistant. Oh, is he? Oh, well done. Yeah, again, uh, <laughs> it's getting, getting a bit tedious. This one. Uh, good luck to Christian on that one. And I think, like I said, there'll be be interesting. Minus six, minus eight. Uh, minus six. Minus six. There you go. So. Saints win to the game favourite. Right, Joe, we're going to pick some matches up, but before we do that, the biggest talking point of the Rugby League season, you'd say, is Morgan Knowles, the resurrection <laughs> of Morgan Knowles. It's caused an absolute, and I'm going to swear here, Sam, so apologies, shitstorm, and it's the talking point. Now, let me just throw a couple of things in this before we talked about this last night on the way to a business meeting. Now, I said, if, if IMG have got involved in this, it's the best marketing stunt of the season it's the best marketing stunt and it might be a taste of things to come because one thing for sure everybody's talking about it and we've had more social media hits on rugby league uh, as anything we've done all year so it's absolutely in the public eye people are asking what has happened I got a phone call from my friend last night saying what's happened what's all this talk about what's happened Uh, have they changed the rules to suit one player have Saints got somebody on the you know all the things they're throwing Somebody texted me last night, uh, and I can honestly say, he said, isn't it lucky that Morgan Knowles has a cousin on the panel? <laughs> that can't and be I true. And I put a question mark that and said... That can't be true. I said, wow. Uh, that it, can't be true. And he's a big watcher of the show. It can't, so that can't be true. So he said... No, no, I didn't know that we were being tongue-in-cheek. I hope you were being tongue-in-cheek, because I'm sure if, <laughs> if there's somebody called John... You know, John Knowles on, uh, on the thing and he's made a vote. I think it'd go down, but hey, listen, <laughs> that I'll let Joe take over now. But again, my opinions, regardless of it, is absolutely unbelievable marketing for the game. That's a positive. Now let's get into whether it's actually right to do, Joe. Uh, so I'm going to quote Rod Studd's Twitter here. He's obviously, <laughs> he causes plenty of arguments himself on Twitter, has has normally backs the judicial's way, but he, he, he had a great uh, review of the process and it will just give the the readers, uh, the readers, the watchers an understanding of... The viewers, yeah. Yeah, of what's happened. Um, 
So the MRP met on Monday. They decided the tackle was reckless and likely to endanger opponent. That's a grade B uh, offence, which is normally a one to two match ban. Uh, Knowles has form. He's been banned before. So that means he got the higher end of it for two matches. Uh, they didn't accept the fixed penalty notice and decided to um, appeal it. So they pleaded not guilty, arguing it was a professional foul, decided to slow down the play of the ball. Uh, they produced medical ev- evidence from their doc- from the doctor that their arm wasn't in, a, in an out of normal range, so it obviously wasn't in a position where that can't be done. And then they also believe, they also used things of such as judo, and I think they used some martial arts in there to show, hey... This is what's done. This is how you... And they, they got that involved. Uh, also, police uh, in police... It, techniques used in police restrainment. So, yeah, quite an interesting one of how they've argued uh, the case. Uh, the, so, the RFL said, no, it's not, it's, it's not a frivolous uh, appeal, as sometimes... Uh, they do, i.e. I think, was it Reese Martin who got a match added? They said it wasn't frivolous, but the two-match ban stood. Um, so this is where so this is where Rod said it gets interesting as the summation the judge apparently said the panel agreed with the MRP verdict but accepted the opponent's arm stayed in a neutral range. Saints saw this as a contradiction, plus contended the appeal verdict should be thrown out. The appeal into that was held on Thursday with a different judge and two different ex-players. Hopefully none of them was the Knowles family member. They basically threw out the Tuesday verdict on the technicality spotted by the Saints. And now this is uh, uh, the bit that he said needed clarity. Um, I would have thought this would mean a retrial plus a repeat on the Tuesday appeal from scratch, but it seems the whole ban was expunged. I'll report, and he said he'll report back. But he said, yeah, that's what's happened. So instead of them doing a retrial, they've just expunged it and said, yeah, your point was correct, Saints. Uh, you did The uh, the uh, appeal committee did contradict themselves. Morgan Knowles is allowed to play the grand final. Right, well, I, I, I saw this breaking, and I think uh, I'm sure we can get some comments, guys, just if we can, Sam and Joe. I saw Ian Blees of Salford... Uh, Thought it were a very sad day for the game, and he, he had hundreds of people agreeing with him. Uh, I'm sure we've got some other big hitters who. I who, can say unanimously on Twitter, it has not been received well. I've not, yeah. apart from Jamie Foster, who argued that in 2008 Lee Smith got his two match band stroked off uh, to play in the grand final. Uh, he, he brought that up, but uh, apart from that, I don't think there's many. People outside of Saints fans and Saints uh, Saints' team <laughs> that agree with the decision. See, see, this is how I see it. I'll try and build it up for you. In my my opinion is, a I always like to look at what's benefit of the game uh, within keeping in the rules. Benefit of the game is the game a better? Yes, because some of the matchups we're going to talk about in a minute. The first one is Morgan Knowles v James Bentley. So as a, as, as a fan, without knowing the rules and what is is you you know which is right? I want to see the best players play on the biggest stage to promote our game all over the world. And the battle between James Bentley and Morgan Knowles is probably one of the four battles I'm going to highlight in a minute. So a do the best players do I want the best players to play? Yeah. B historically has some players missed out on grand finals. Yes, because of this rule. As the appeal worked, no, it hasn't worked. So you can't highlight a Lee Smith if you don't highlight. Probably 20 times when players have missed semis, challenge cup finals. All them players now be looking at this thinking, wow, you know, did we not did we not do enough to appeal? Did we not get the right information? Have Saints done better than us getting that information? As the pressure of whatever on the game, you know, being that big. But bottom line is it's been a funny year, a funny two year anyway, we cut after pre pro COVID. And I just want to see the best players play on the biggest stage. I don't want anybody to miss out on a game like this. That's my personal view. Does it make that much difference to Saints? He's probably the best player in the country at the moment at what he does. Even though I think of late, he's just dipped a little bit. I don't know why, but and Morgan Knowles. Do you know, watching Morgan lately, you look at James, James Bentley and Morgan, and you look at them both. Very similar. You, you put James a little bit more in your face, a little bit more vocal, a little bit more... I'm not going to use the word grubby because it, I don't like grubby, but James is certainly... 
challenging you in your face it's and he's at you. Aggressiveness. And then Morgan just seems to quiet assassin and but Morgan's got a little bit of recklessness in him. When he shoots out, there's a little bit of an eye shot in or it's something that can go wrong, which happened obviously in that game. And I'm sure James has got it in. So there's a touch paper there. Uh, that that could go off at any minute. Will Leeds feel aggrieved? Yes. Would they feel absolutely? The, now, Leeds can turn this to a positive saying, if I was Rowan and I hadn't seen Rowan's comments on it. I, I, have we got any, Sam? Well, Rowan's the, big, the big argument that I think you've you've missed there is of Reese Martin appealing something that you'd... I think in quite a few, especially in, in my opinion, and quite a few, especially on obviously the Twitterverse and all that, Reese Martin got a, a match extended for a high tackle that once they got the video footage wasn't that bad at all. Whether so, you can you can't you can't argue. I think that he's he's had his expunged, but then Reese Martin had a game added for it being a frivolous attempt. That's the main argument here, that Reece Martin, Leeds could have not been in that final because a great player in Reece Martin, who's had a fantastic two seasons at Leeds, was not allowed to play in the quarters and semi-finals because of a frivolous appeal. And then they Saints have done it themselves and done it twice and ended up getting it washed off. And Yeah, again, I go back to what my point is. I'm, I'm quite happy that the best teams are playing on the biggest stage. That's what I want to well, see. It's the semi-final, not a huge it stage is the game. that Reece Martin wasn't allowed to play on. Yeah, it. but it's not as big as this. But it's, it's a, a semi-final, line, a semi-final historically, there'll be 16,000 in. This is going to be 68,000 sellout. It's going to be millions all over the world. This is the biggest spectacle of our game going out worldwide. For me, let's get the best players. The debate, if I was rowing down and I'm rowing Smith, I'd say, do you know what? Bring it on. Come boys, on. boys, let's bring it on. If we beat Saints without him, they're going to be chirping and saying this and that. We're going to beat them with their best side available at that moment. We're going to beat them without the well, rules. Let's beat them. Say, and that's what a, a coach would say. Now, you look at... You look at Rowan and knowing how he is, I've got a feeling he's probably already said that and said, bring it on, we'll, we'll take on everything they've got. But i tell you what, another one is, do you feel more sorry with the new, you know, uh, we discussed this two weeks, it caused a bit of a drama on the show, but when somebody headshot somebody and you take him out of that game and then he misses a grand final like Caesar now, you know, what's happening in Australia, what's happening in this country? That for me is so sad. Like that for me is... You know, somebody's reckless behaviour then takes a person out of a grand final. So if you now are in a semi-final and there's an automatic one-week cooling-off period for a head test, you know, how, do you go into them semi-finals then thinking, you know, and I hope this never happens in our game, but somebody could say, right, you know, if I go for him here, he don't, you know, it could be he's off the pitch straight away and he can't play next week. You know, you can now, within the rules, risk that. I think the penalty for headshots should be especially in them big games, should be absolutely extreme. So nobody's capable of doing it. Because that, for me, is the saddest part of all this, is because of a because of somebody's recklessness, you're missing the biggest game of your life. That, to me, is the saddest thing ever. Somebody mistiming tackles and grabbing here and grabbing there, I don't know. That's I, I actually feel for... I think Caesar thinks is absolutely heartbreaking. Right? And if you think about this, I don't know how many times in history people get one chance to play in the grand final. Maybe if you're lucky, two in a career. Danny Maguire and, and Kevin Sinfield were lucky enough to go hit these lads. But I know loads of players. Luke Gale, you know, played in one grand final. That's it. He might never play in another grand final. God, I hope Caesar, that's not what he goes down as, you know, as playing in somebody headshots. <laughs> he gets took off that game and then he gets took off the next game. And then you think, wow, that is... So, listen, the best players are on show. What we're going to do now for you... Please get your comments in. I know there's been a lot of comments about that and I wish we had Mick Gledel on here because Mick would have been full of emotion. It'd have been all on the lead side. It's disgusting what's happening in this game. It'd have been calling out every single official and your lucky officials, the Gled's not here because he knows all your names. You'd have been getting the boot. We might even got the Steve Crosley. Well, it's we might have even got the Steve Crosley version of that, and which to be even funnier. Which Sam's going to play you. I hope Mick doesn't mind today, Sam, at the, at the, to get us a bit of fun to build up the show. I don't want Mick's original one, but I'd like to see Steve Crosley's impression of Mick, just to add a bit of fun to the show. Which we thought it was fantastic, didn't we? When you showed it, everyone loves it. So Steve Crosley's going to have his Mad Monday. He's had a bit of fun. <laughs> we'll do a separate bit on that, surely. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit so, random so, so timing we'll, for that we'll, one. We'll throw that one into the mix. <laughs> Worst timing ever. 
I'll throw that one into the oh, mix. God. I hope that Mick Glenn. It's, it's on the, I hope that Mick Glenn. I say he, 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 you're very lucky, Mick won't take because the officials would have got some boot. I think the officials angle. should get some boot. I you've not given me a chance to speak. They should get some boot. I think it is terrible. I'd, you can't just argue the best players should play because it just makes. A, a joke of the whole system. As a supporter of the game. As a I'm supporter saying. of the game, it still makes a joke of the whole system. Like, it shouldn't, I don't think, if it was his arm in the, like Saints, the thing you've got to be faithful to say is, was his arm, if they can proper prove his arm at that exact angle, wasn't that dangerous. Sam, can you get the tackle on? Not now, but could you roll it as in, around this time in the clip, could you put that in the clip? Just so people can see it in slow motion, which would be amazing because I've, I'm, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen it. You're arguing and you haven't seen it? No, no, I, on my life, I haven't seen I've it. I've seen I'm, it five times. It looks bad to me. His arm gets pulled right around. It's It was silly, wasn't it? it was, I don't think. I'm obviously, sorry, I haven't closed I Apologies there. I actually watched the game. I haven't closed it up and looked at it in detail. I have, I have, and I think it is. It's 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 not a good. It's even if the tackle itself isn't that incredibly bad. I think it's just a. It's even he, even Morgan's probably admitting it's a a bit of a daft thing for him to do. He's tried to sl- slow down the play of ball hundred uh, percent. Get that, but then he's he's pulled his arm around the back, which you could end up with a dislocated arm. You li- you've got plenty of ligaments and shoulders. I think it's it's just something you don't want to see and obviously I think that's seen in most of the players who have made comments on it have said what what was that it doesn't make sense that he's done that there's plenty of ways to slow down the player ball and that would be your last choice I think it is silly I don't think it, I, I disagree with you I don't think it's that good for the game well if uh, as in the not on the spectacle as in the rules of the game yeah no and well and the spectacle because you're watching someone that really if you're following the rules shouldn't be there well, if you're going tomorrow and paying £40 for a ticket which by the way you're not paying I'll be paying but if we turn up tomorrow and watch that game do we want to see Bentley versus Morgan Knowles yes or no are you happy for him not to play or as a spectacle driving an hour and a half two hours traffic well, cause you, well, you're putting the spectacle on Bentley versus Morgan Knowles. First off, Bentley's playing second row, Morgan Knowles playing 13. They'll come in contact. They'll find each other. They'll find each other. But that's not the direct That's not the direct go at each other. I think it's not... Well, it's true that you can't... You, it's a Everyone's state. on about it. Everyone I've talked to You're said. on about it, which I agree, but it's not everyone. Anyway, it's, come on, you're better than this. Let's, I'm let's, not. We're having the debate. Right, OK. You just don't like debating with me for so many You don't. <laughs> I do. It's I just weird. don't understand where you're going with it. Anyway, carry on. Because it's not... <coughs> how can it be good for the game if you're not following some sort of guy? I'm saying you're driving tomorrow in the car. Does it add a bit of spice if you've got two of the best players in the country playing against each other? I'm both? not crying if Morgan Knowles isn't on wow, the pitch. that's the answer. Right, okay, well, I I'm, am. I'm still thinking what an amazing what amazing grand final it's going to be. Right, Sam's here we go. I don't know if we can get this on the camera. Can we do a close-up, Sam? Can you do it? Uh, you watch it and you give your reaction. Oh, God. And he's just changed his it. view. I did see it at the time. I'm watching the reaction of the player. He's obviously really hurt. He knows how serious he's straight away, Morgan. You see the players around him going, oh, no. He's then pleading his case. It's in slow motion here. So he's got him. My God, it's like used to doing playground. It's, it's uh, behind the back, and it's pulling his arm up behind the back, and it's twisting to slow the player the ball down. Wow. Uh, based on that, you've got to say he's got away with murder. Thank you. And I'm watching it here. He's got two hands holding him. I don't know if he's deliberately tried to turn him round to hurt him. I think he's just holding it to slow the play of the ball down. That's that's my defence of Morgan. I think he's hold, slowing the play of the ball down. I don't think he's intentionally gone to hurt him by putting his arm behind his back. I think the player's turned at the last minute. It looks even worse. And, he's, and then he's dropped it. And it looks like he's put his thing. But I think, you know, based on that, it's still got to be... You know, you'd have thought a one-game ban uh, 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 and the rules are right. But again, in the Morgan's defence and the love of the game, I'm still going along with I want to see it. I want to see that. If you look at Morgan when he's got the yellow card, I'm watching it here, he's, there's no real argument. He's, he's, took, he's took it as though, you know, I probably oh, he's always having a bit of a moan now to his then. But please, anyway, please put your comments in as many as you can before tomorrow's final. That's a massive talking point. It, you know, as a lover of rugby league, do you want it as me or like Joe said? No, we stick to the rules. 
I, it doesn't make a difference to me if he's done wrong he's done wrong and I don't need to see him in the grand final me I'm saying the spectacle I want to see him in the grand final do I think the rule's right I think it's probably it's a one game ban thank you thank you yeah well, please as many comments as you can in and let's have a, a, a debate about it right Joe let's go directly to the matchups I've just mentioned my first matchup so we'll move on from that one we don't want to get into that one let's get the halves and let's see the halves that we play, we think are going to be playing. So at the moment, we think it could be Cam Smith and Blake Austin yep. against Johnny Lomax. You've got Jack Wellsby. I've got Jack Wellsby. Who we got? If it is that, or we've, or, or, where, where, do we, where does that work? I think you've got to go the, the best halfback in rugby league at the moment England's starting off no if no buts I think you've got to go Johnny Lomax and St Helens whether if Jack plays half as well great runner don't put on the plays as much but he's got Johnny to do all that I think they're very athletic very fit Johnny's been there done that multiple times on every stage of rugby league I'm going that's again It's this is not this is not an insult towards Blake or Pardon me, Cammy. I think both great players, both outstanding. You know what I mean? Blake on his days, a terrific runner. Cammy, Cammy could be the new. Cammy could come and rock the show as he is, as he has done this season, and carry up. Will carry on doing. If it it's Cammy, yeah, not, 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 if it's Cam, uh, I don't know. Whoever Rich it is, Myler. if it is Richie, I think both of them options, whether it's Cam or Richie, I think the class of Johnny. Uh, overtakes it all and I've got to go St. Helens win that battle and again no disrespect to whoever plays the leads off all three of them fantastic players but I don't think I think Johnny takes the the hat on that one and then with the running threat and the just overall aggressiveness competitiveness that Jack Wellsby brings I'm going St. Helens win the half battle right um, I probably don't I probably agree with that uh, I'm a bit worried about I've always said this and again I'm probably biased towards Lewis Dodge but when Johnny plays with, with Jack, I don't see a control uh, 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 of the end of plays. I see a little bit of uh, more of a running threat, 100%, but I don't see that lovely little control of the ball when Saints can really put the box kicks in, get the chase right, control, control. Uh, so I think that opens it up. Since Rowan's come, he wants the house to run, run and run again. If you watched last week, there were a couple of times when Cam played six, and Cameron ended up not kicking or playing on the last. And he literally just got tackled. That's come from Rowan. Yeah, yeah. People didn't understand when they were talking. I, explained to, I watched it with two of my friends and I explained that to them. So they didn't understand it, a lot of people. So that had been preset of Rowan saying, if you, can <coughs> start, if you can start them coming out of yardage in that spot, which is a metre and a half, whatever, take that risk apart from putting a crap kick in or a crap end to, the, uh, end to the set. So you might see a bit of that more tomorrow. Austin suits Rowan's system so much because it's a running system. Austin, his, his, his strong point is running, running and more running, defending, running, defending, running. So actually in a system where he's, everyone's been told to run more, the runners are going to come good. I actually think Austin, and I, I've not been a big fan of Austin's, and I, I certainly wanted his last year at Warrington. Don't think he's been big grateful. He's, I'll give him. I'm, I'm going to stand up and be corrected. I think in the last six games, been fantastic. So, but I still think I think Johnny's. You know, Johnny come up with a couple of plays. There's that play last year against Catalans now, and I go back to it, and we're lucky enough to be able to be talking to Lewis Dodzer was involved in it, and, and I talked to Lewis afterwards about how he stuck patience to put that play on and stick to a system, even though there was seven minutes to go in a grand final and then the pressure was electric. And I think it was like they have a panic button, but they still didn't want to press the panic call because they felt they could still put a play on and all of a sudden they got the play on. And they set it up with Johnny and, and, and the grubber and whatever it happened and it happened, they were like, oh my. And so I do think Johnny's got that in him. I think if they get the field position, Johnny's got that in him to execute a play against anybody. Wellsby's probably the most competitive player, uh, as is Bentley and Morgan. Probably they put them three on the pitch. You actually, you put, you probably put young Jared Connor in there. He looks absolutely will to win, but he's certainly most competitive. He's an sensational runner of ball, sensational competitor. Um, I'm thinking, you know, and, and he got the young player of the year like this week. Did, did Jack? 
And and I, and I, I, when I shocked, I was a little bit shocked. I thought there were a couple of people who could have challenged Jack uh, for that in my opinion. But that's that's maybe one we can roll up afterwards the awards and see if we think they've got it right. But he's unbelievable for his age and unbelievable freak his talent. You think about the you think about, I think he's played in two grand finals already. I don't know if that's right. Sam again, Jack. He could have played in two, and he's only twenty. He was, certainly was the best player in the big occasion when they played Australia at Edinley, the under 18s test match. Well, he's done two because he scored the winning one two years ago and then played That's last it, year. That's it, there you go. And he's 20 and he scored the, he scored two against the Aussies in a big game. He's a big game player. He's full of confidence. So, you know, at the moment, we'll tip Saints of the edge probably on that one. Yeah. Let's go. If we're going to play um, the next matchup, if we're going to play. The fullbacks. So if we, let's say we're going to play a party versus Richie Myler. Over to you, Joe. Um, Apoate has been brilliant this year, but is he is he a winger? Is he a fullback? I'd say I love him as a winger personally. Oh, oh, Benison, sorry, apologise. Oh, Benison, uh, sorry, apologise. Yeah, I've done this to you twice. Oh, young John Benison, they, could they play him? I think either one. I think Richie Myler's form. This year, tips him as maybe defensively. Even he, uh, Myler's great player defensively sometimes makes some mistakes, but as an attacker, as an attacking runner who is the, who is a great one of the best support players in Super League at the, to this day. Still, his his running game is fantastic. So I've I've got to say, either one of those, Myler Myler wins. So I'd fill it up. <laughs> Got cold. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I think miley has been a lot better defensively, uh, and I think he's been unsensational under the eye ball. I think he's been a sensational uh, player for Leeds. I'm biased. I'd still have Jack Walker. Fit Jack Walker, I'd take him out. But again, that's been biased. Then, but we're talking about the grand final. Um, I think Miley's had a sensational season, and again, in a system full of runners. It's perfect for Rowan's system. He, he runs the ball. You know, he likes to come round the back of a play either side at Rook. He can do it from early. It, an early shift, he can do it from a late shift. He can play quick. He can play long. You know, we can't see, you know, we can't really see a weakness other than, you know, I'm trying to think about it. Would they get the eye bombs on him? But he's, he's took a lot of them this year. So, yeah, you know, does he give you 150 metres in yardage? Definitely not. That's what his weakness is. He's more the other side of the ball, isn't it? His carries, his thing, his brilliant yeah. to support play but he's, he's not there to make where Hopper Warte and even John John likes to run into that I think both of them probably winning that individual point but I think Myler's overall game is at his age at 32 33 it, it's it's Myler's year if he's done another year yeah I'm going to pick the next one I'm going to pick in is Ash Hanley versus Tommy Maked now they would be my two England wingers um, Ash has been overlooked I'd love to challenge uh, Sean and the England camp on why Ash has been overlooked I've not seen that has he? Yeah well Sam can you check again I've, I've, I've heard he didn't make uh, and maybe that's through injury so apologies Sean but I mean I think he's been the number one uh, winger this year uh, I've got I've got a fit Ash to get over Tommy uh, on yardage on, on defence on the eye bomb a ball and you know what him and Sutty on that left edge You've got, they've been sensational this year and the, and the wider world of rugby have not given them enough toffee on this. They haven't realised Liam scored the three in the semi-final and, but all year Liam's been doing that. All year he's been doing that with Ash. They've got an unbelievable combination and I tell you what, if it's Conrad on the right edge out inside Tommy or whatever, they've got El coming. They've got El because they can defend as well. Such is such a big lad. The big lads, these lads are 6'3 between them. Probably 100 kilos, so they're not going to be absolutely intimidated by Conrad. They're going to be getting into Conrad. Uh, and I tell you what, if Conrad's if Conrad doesn't get his fitness and his turn right, these will exploit it. They'll have Myler coming on the left edge, they'll have some running game on that edge, and I tell you what, it, it'll be sensational. You, you talk about, I'm thinking this, let's say Cam does play six. One thing you get with Cameron playing six is, the, my opinion, is the most skillful loose forward in the game. I don't see anybody else close to what he can do with the ball. Nope. You know, people can say, does he do enough yardage? Does he do enough tackling? Well, he does a lot of tackling. Does he do enough yardage? Does he do enough this? You know, he's never going to be a Morgan Smithy. So, so you know, Morgan can get on that ground and do 50 tackles 
and he can absolutely compete at any level, any level, any level. But Cameron gives you something else. And if I had backs like Ash Anley and Liam Sutcliffe and Richie Myler out back, he can put a pass on a sixpence. I'll never forget the lads at Leeds have told me Cameron Kidd's probably on his person in, I, I won't know, in rugby league at the moment. Who can hit a pass each way, 25 yards? He can hit anybody off the wrist pass or long pass either side from anywhere. He can go short. If you watch his, what he did with Bentley in the semi, I thought, well, genius. When he got that opening, he squared up first before he played it. He squared up to commit the defenders and he went like that. Cameron Braid is sensational at seeing the picture very early. Very much like you'd say a Wayne Rooney in football when they said, you know, when did he see? He see Cameron's very much like that. He's born to play rugby. He's born to, to do this. So I, 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 that gives that gives for me a shandling in the edge of a Tommy Maketon. I think he'll get some ball on that left edge. That was a wild ride to finish Always. off with <laughs> Chandley being better than Tommy Makinson. This year, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't think you can say this year and use what Cam's not played that many games at half, so it's probably. Yeah, so I'm saying that I think we'll get some ball. But in terms of what 1v1, I'm not going to say in terms of the game script, I'm going to say 1v1, who's the better one. I think experience probably tells you Tommy Mac, Tommy Mac. tips. Tips the scale on that one. I think Ash Shocker. Ash in two or three years will is is Shocker. Sl- this year, Tommy Mack above Ash Andy. It's very similar. We're not yeah. going back through history, we're going this year. No, I'm not. I'm going through history as well, because it's it's the grand final and history and experience dictates a them big games as Danny Maguire showed in his 2018 win I think you need that experience you need that history you need that knowledge of being in them big moments and I'm it's I think Ash Ash is an absolute monster with his yardage with his meter with all with his carry uh, but I believe but I believe Tommy Mack is also absolutely fantastic and Sam can you get me Tommy making some V Ash Hanley this year just on tries and yardage just to see just so we can give a little bit of uh, debate to the viewers hopefully Joe's <coughs> Joe's making a very strong case for Tommy making some based on experience again it's probably cl- I think you're looking at two of the best wingers in the league aren't you I think that for me it's the two of the best wingers in the league so it's, that is a toss up I think either way but I think in a grand final experience does matter However much that hurts us as supporters of young players, young rugby, I think experience does does come into play. Well, I, mean, I mean, Sutty's played 200, has Ash played 120 games now? Would you say 150 he's games? Played, he's not played four grand fi- for his fourth grand final in a row, like Tommy Mack hasn't been a star in probably every single one of the grand finals. Right, well, that'd be a good, good argument, Joe. Let's, let's see if Sam can put some type of uh, stat into the debate. Yeah, the tries and meter, yardage, yeah, meters. Yeah, but say he's above Ash. Right, so there's six for Megs and Joe, you're one up on that one. Yardage, Sam. Ash was the number one yardage man in rugby league when I last checked, but that was a couple of weeks ago. Whether that's changed now. I, I think Sam will get that name, but it's a, it's a, fan, a fabulous mouth-watering... Uh, yeah, oh, here we go. I sound like the top meter age from the back five. So, yeah, mouth-watering clash. We, we try and get that fire again, debate it, see what you think. The next one, which, I, which I'm loving... Um, two different players, but a show me favourite. I like Cammy and like a young Liam. You know, all the all the show me lads. Wish you all the best of luck. We haven't got anybody at, uh, playing at the Saints, but you know, Mikolai Oledsky versus Matty Lees uh, is a mouth watering prospect. Uh, I know we're all going to say Knowles and Bentley. I know that's what a lot of my friends keep saying, and the lads who you know are saying it. But Mikolai Oledsky could he play eighty minutes in the grand final? I was the J- famous Jamie Peacock and the other Well he didn't take him off in NJP but I think he's I think Mick he, I wonder if he's capable James Graham played 80 minutes I think James it? Graham might have done Joe or he might have just come off at the end but yeah can he play 80 minutes Joe? Yeah, it's a tough call but I'd say yeah, yeah, it, I 
think for Leeds to win, he might have to. That's maybe the way I'll frame it. I think for Leeds to win and be at it with the props, because like you said, Saints might not have... Matty Lee's brilliant, Ignatius Parsi, absolutely fantastic. I think Mick's better than them both, but the depth there, that the depth that Saints have... Yeah, well, you're saying player in Tetavano is not as players. Not, 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 in my opinion, not as good as the bench of Saints. So I think for them, for Leeds to... Leads to do it. I think Mick might have to play close to eighty minutes, and if he's if he can, if he, if we figure out he can and Rowan plays him and they end up winning, you've got a mega star, haven't you? Well, not you already. Well, have, it's, it's, it's funny with Mick because Mick plays different style. Mick will play competitive. His yardage is fantastic. He finds his front. He, he's. He, he, I mean, I watched about four weeks. He, he ended up on a third shift and he's playing a, a shift pass on the right. He's very athletic. Matt is looking to take your head off at all counts. He's looking to shoot in and absolutely destroy you. He he blows up a lot quicker than Mick. You yeah. know, Mick can play long minutes. Matty can't. Matty can miss tackles more than what Mick does. Mick, Mick doesn't fly into tackles, but he's very good at connection, slow it down. He's improved his defence remarkably. My opinion, Mick is the number one prop in the country at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give Mick this one hands down, yeah. even though I'm a big fan of Matty Lee's. I think Matty's got a... But I always worry with Matty a little bit like Morgan at the moment when they're shooting out and the and the eye shot is so prevalent in our game now that if you go in above a certain thing, I'm always wincing thinking he's capable of taking someone's head clean off and that had put your team on a massive back foot. You know, the, a yellow card, I right? don't see that with Mick. I see with Mick, I can see it. So I think if we can, if Leeds can get Mick to play them long minutes, I know he's had a bad shoulder, but he got through the semi-final. He's starting to play with injuries, which a lot of the best players of all time do. Joe's looking what's like, what's any any news, Joe? No, I thought right. it was. I thought it was, but it wasn't. Um I think that Mikolai playing a lot, you know, a, a, a game tomorrow. I'm gonna say this to the to the people listening and hope this I think Mikolai's the most important player on the pitch tomorrow. I think if he gets Leeds flying on that front foot and he's in the mood, and, and do you know what? When they give him captain's armband the other day, I, I I hope I hope this, you know. I actually said to Two or three people of a 12, 15 month because they asked me what Leeds missed and I thought they missed. I thought Cameron and, and Mikolai, they should have met captain and assistant and somebody said, well, they're that young, that's ridiculous. And I said, but they're the, they're the heartbeat of the team. They're the most respected members of the team. Everyone loves them. They're both going to be top, top players. And when I saw Mick with the armband, it, it just all made sense. It just made sense to me. You know, we've been through hours with Mick and hours with Mick when he used to get nervous, insecure, he used to doubt his place. He doesn't doubt what he said now. Mick's just Mick now. He's like Mick and he and what a story. What a story. But I, I think the the, the captaincy because if Cruz don't start Mick's captain tomorrow of a grand final side at twenty two year old, which is absolutely sensational. So I'm gonna go in Mikolai uh Aledsky against Matty Lees. Yeah. The next one, and maybe this is the most important one of all, again, you've got the greatest hooker ever to play the game, James Roby, the number one hooker. You know, I never thought Kieran Cunningham could be beat. I'm a fan of Paul McShane's. I love him from my boots. This man's the best. He's the best, the best, and he's the best. He's probably the best hooker in the world. The best. Yeah, he's probably been the best hooker in the world on probably three out of them years. He's the man of all men. He's won a steal about three times. The man of all men, bloody hell. Big st- There's no <laughs> doubt. Statement. His records prove it now. He's men. the number one player. The he, in, in fact, I reckon <laughs> if you did a if you did a if you did a vote in all the players, who's the greatest Super League player of all times, James Roby wins. Definitely top three, isn't he? Top three is Yeah, yeah, I think you, I genuinely think he'd yeah. win. And then you're gonna pull historically Jared Jared O'Connor's story is unbelievable. They've got a back rower come 13, been told to play Ucker eight week ago, and now he's the starting Ucker of a Brad Dwyer and Cruz Leeming. Oh, he's, Cruz Leeming's the, the England Ucker, has been picked, and Brad Dwyer's been the form Ucker, but they've gone for a 21 year old lad. Joe, come on. You you did a great job yourself there. You were flying. I didn't well, want to saying, come didn't on. Want to interrupt you now. <laughs> I, I, have I got it right? Is this the most unbelievable thing that's happening in the game? He's going against the master. If it's a, he's been unbelievable. Whatever happens in the final, I mean, against James Roby, yeah, I think you've got to pick James Roby, but Jared O'Connor, all credit to him. How good has he been? Scoring the try to get him in. He's been unbelievable, and he? he's took it on his chin. He's, 
it, like you said, I think in rugby, one of the one of the major things I think you need to be a great player, however good your skill is, is that competitiveness. And he has got it in heaps and bounds. And in these big games, he's showed up. He's given it a hundred and ten percent every game. And the yeah, fair play to him. He deserves to walk out as the number. Obviously, not his number because you go with the shirt number, but as the starting hooker in the grand final. I think he deserves it. I think all respect to Cruz has been awesome earlier on in the season. Brad, Brad is Brad, and he he, can, he comes off on the bench and electrifies people. But Jared O'Connor deserves to be the starting hooker in that final. It's it's just, you know, I, I, I you know, I hope they do sell this on Sky tomorrow. I know it's hard sometimes. Terry Terry's dad's on Sky. At least so Terry's it, walking out the grand final trophy, so if they don't go. mention it and sell that as a big thing. Is there a thing on that? They got they got last year with Kev Brown, then this year's <laughs> Terry. Hey, have Yorkshire have Yorkshire done something wrong here? Like we're just gonna call you out here, RFL. I don't know how many times, but have I are you telling me and I'm going to challenge on this. Danny Maguire has Danny ever... Danny Maguire's host, uh, giving out the Harry Sunderland. Are they saying Danny Maguire or Jamie Peacock or Kevin Seinfeld have never walked that trophy out? And we've had Kevin Brown last year with Terry O'Connor this year. And I'd like to know who's done the other year because that is, you know, not against them, lads. Absolute stars. Absolute fantastic, you know, but come on. Come on. Leads, they've got to tell him me JP's got to walk out with that thing or somebody of that ilk. That is, somebody's going to tell me now JP did it three years ago. And hopefully they do, but come on, come on. So listen, wrap all that up. The battles are on. The lines are drawn. The social medias are against each other. You know, the Morgan Knowles is, is give it the spice. You've got two coaches, the experienced one against the young up and coming king. You've got battles all over the field. And the most important thing of all, what makes the game tick, we've got the fans. Who wins the fans, Joe? St. Helens or Leeds? <laughs> this is the one that gets you most in trouble. I'd say you've got to go. <laughs> Historically, you've got to say... Joe, so you've been biased. You've been sat as a young lad, 10-year-old, Leeds, Rhinos. And you've been there when Luke Burgess walked over to you at 9-year-old with his hat, placed it on your head, Joe, yes. me. You ran down, you were in tears. You started as a Leeds Rhino, but I were there at, this year at Saints, Warrington. I've never seen an atmosphere at league match. This year, this year, the Saints, Warrington at home was electric. The Saints, we sat, did we sit in the Saints... Uh, side last year or did we sit the Catalans we sat, well we sat in the middle in but the we middle. had Catalans behind us didn't we yeah so we had the Catalans do we know what the tickets have sold Sam is it 40,000 you know who's sold the most tickets tomorrow do we know what it is that'll be an interesting one because Joe's not saying out here because he don't want the Saints fans to give him the boot because I know what he's <laughs> going to say he's thinking if Leeds take 30,000 down they will out sing any other club in Super League yeah any idea, guys? Let's have a look. What tickets allocation they've spent. By the way, we're all going tomorrow. We're going to sit in the fans bit. So, this is the Leeds Rhinos announcement. I've not looked at Saints yet. Earlier this evening, Leeds Rhinos announced that less than 100 tickets of their allocation were still remaining as the Rhinos looked to do the impossible. Uh, so, that's... So they've got 100 tickets left on their website, which is absolutely tremendous out of a full state. Sam Saints. I believe, Sam, I believe Saints took their allocation as we well. We have so. sold out our initial allocation, but have taken additional tickets detailed in the map Saints. below. And that's St. Helens. Wow. You're going to see the red and white, I believe the blue and amber tomorrow. Is absolutely, I, you know what? I'll throw this one in. It could determine the game because historically, the grand final will take 15,000 non supporting fans, as in fans of rugby league, who have no uh, alliance to either. But these are probably two of the biggest supported clubs in the world of rugby league, and they're going to bring it on tomorrow. You know, it, 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 I can't describe grand final day, and I'll try and just build this up before we finish. I've been to about 10, 11 grand finals now. And if you ask me, what do I want to do? Grand final, Challenge Cup. I'll always say grand final. It's the one game I don't try and miss. Uh, I enjoy the magic weekend. We get a box. 
I got asked to get corporate for this. I could have got a box. Said no. I like to be in the. I like to be in there. And I like to be among the fans. I like to be allowed. It is absolutely electric tomorrow. Now against that, there's all the, the bloody car park and the traffic jams, the food, whatever you know. You get all that, and the coming out of grand final, you're absolutely knackered. You've got to drive on. It's exhausting to watch the game. You, you know, we like to see an hour after the game, Joe's yawning now, so that's how tired he is before he's gone to the game. But I tell you now, it is the best. It is the best, the best. And if these two go at it, we have fast game. It will be sensational. The famous one with, do you play the conditions? What's the conditions tomorrow, Sam? I'm sorry, keep asking these questions. Do if this is if this is historically we play it in a different date. This is about a month earlier. So the sun's out today. We don't usually have a grand final with the sun out. It's usually a bit of rain, a bit foggy, a bit cold. This is this could be absolutely great weather tomorrow. Who does it suit, Saint Tolis? Both for different reasons. I'm, I know that sounds bad. I think it suits Saints because if the weather's good, they like to play fit, they like to play fast, they like to play aggressive. And they Leeds. pass more than Leeds, do they think, at the moment? Or? No. So, Randling, you think Leeds pass more? Uh, well, if you let me finish, I think I'm going to go Saints for that reason because of the speed. They need nice weather. They play fast, they play aggressive. Uh, Leeds because they play early on the shift. They like to run the ball very much. They like to play from deep in their own half. And I think that's... I think the weather suits both teams. I don't yeah, think disagree with that. I think Saints put the ball through the hands more than Leeds. There'll probably be a stat to prove that. But I think they execute plays. With um, Rowan? Sorry, Saints yeah, execute but, plays. No, no, I mean, I, I can't agree. Rowan's with more on running and, and playing what you see in the gap opening, whereas Saints will put a play on for 10 minutes ahead. So the handling of Saints is making sure the ball control of where you finish your sets is executed on each play. They get they like to get yard into the app into box, kick you for half an hour and then take you apart. Whereas Leeds playing what they see, so it's bang, bang, bang. So it's both you've got the execution play against play what you see. Leeds seem to be a lot like half a thing one up and then they go and then they try and push through. I think Saints will pass, what? pass, pass and get where. You disagree? Well yeah, but yeah. I'd be interesting you know all these stats and we're sorry we should have probably if we'd have got a load of these we could have actually said to you no based on stats you know Mick, Mick's the king of that game Mick, <coughs> Mick could have brought it and he said to you how many passes each team make each half and that but listen we'll wrap it up there at, 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 with a prediction now Michael Gledel in his, his I think he's always got cold he's sat I'll get it, to load it up Mick's, Mick's no no Mick's, Mick sent me yeah. his prediction yeah he sent us yeah I was going to say yeah, yeah. so Mick sent me his prediction and Mick's prediction, if if he's allowed, he said, is St. Helens by 14. <laughs> We've not allowed Jimmy Mack a prediction because he's very Leeds biased, <laughs> even though he's from Saints. In fact, as I speak, I can tell you something here because he's actually typing. He must have heard us. I don't know he's heard us, but I don't think we're live. So Jimmy's on now, but we think Jimmy Jimmy's going to go for Leeds. Um he does like Saints though he does have a soft spot for Saints so it'll be interesting what Jimmy did Joe Sam I'm going to put it on you both prediction oh, God I've got well I've got with my matchups I've got more Saints than Leeds haven't I obviously I've got bias I'm, I'm a bit more biased towards Leeds growing up as a fan and supporter and being there at most of the grand finals uh, Jimmy's gone I'll go Saints by 8 and hopefully Leeds proved me wrong um, uh, I want to play to put hopefully that's just cost you every player at Saints sorry Jimmy uh, for third week in a row I hope I'm not jinxing uh, there's a bit of Leeds biased in Jimmy Mack there so <laughs> any Saints player out there if you ask to see him just pass your son over to Joe and myself <laughs> <laughs> we're kidding Jimmy it's a joke uh, <coughs> I'm going to go I, I don't I don't don't know. Sam. I don't know how tough. No, I'm going to go Leeds. Wow. Leeds by. Leeds by a four. Joe me. It's that time of the show. 
It's now or never. We'll build I'm it gonna up. I'm going to go... You've it, never got one right in four years. I, get, I think I get more right than you if we'd go back in history. I think I'm going to go... Uh, a Johnny Lomax drop goal in the final three minutes, 13 to 12, St. Helens. 13 to 12, St. Helens. That's a low scoring. I'm doing the opposite. I'm going to go for one of the highest scoring grand finals in the history. Both very I think good defences, I don't know. I think they'll play it fast. I think they'll play it electric. I think they'll be a little bit, you know, looking, and this is not being disrespectful to both teams. The, the names don't roll out at you. On the, on the lead side, they've done it with Endeavour, and they've done it with... Great defence. Great defence, great, great attitude, great turning up for each other. I think they're going to score. It's a different game tomorrow. The pressure's on. The pressure The pressure is on. This is the greatest dance floor in rugby league. This is it. This is our last game before we win to World Cup. And I'm going to leave you with this. Give us a score then. Lead Rhinos. What's the score? What's the score? Give us your score prediction. I think it's men in the stars. Mike Rush is a big friend of mine. Andy Dodds will be tearing my ass out as we speak. Lewis... If you'd have played some... Give us your score, then. Two seconds. Lewis, if you'd have played, they'd have won. Uh, I think Leeds by 12. But what's your score? 34-18. Oh, that's not 12, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a legend, 34-22. <laughs> And if, you, and if you're asking me to work out your deals next week, Sam, if you put that on that short, I'll kill you. <laughs> please, uh, please, Craig just works out. Leeds by 12 and I said 22. <laughs> so apologies. Uh, Leeds, 34, Saints, 22. Man of the match. Mikolai Aledsky will be the man of, what trophy is it called? What Danny Maguire has given? The Harry Sunderland. I think so, that might be wrong. You've just made it up again. Is it the Lance Todd? It's either one. Uh Anyway, it's it's the trophy tomorrow. I think Mikolai Letsky wins that. And I think uh, this is 2017 when they beat Cass. They said we're the biggest underdog for Leeds to win. This is just as big, if not bigger. Harry Sunderland, yeah. Harry Sunderland. Right. I didn't agree that they said the semi-final were the best performance in the history of Leeds. I, I think that was a bit of emotion. I think what they did in 17 against Castle was... I think lost one game all that season to win a grand final with all the odds and and and, and when Mac come back from I think the three the three one before that when they were fifth and they went bang 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 and they still won it it was unbelievable but anyway best of luck to both teams best of luck to both fans let's have an unbelievable day it's show me the money rugby league TV uh, grand final preview um, Joe's gone. St. Helens to win by a drop goal. J Johnny Lomax or Jack Wells. Craig and Sam goal. are on Leeds. Jimmy Max on Saints, but wishing Leeds won. Again, that's for all you young Saints lads that we tries to get. And the great Michael Gledel, uh, who, who, who we might even leave with a street crossly as the thing, has just said it's Saints by eight points. Said 14. 14, 14 points. points. Wow, that's at the goal. All the best, thank you, and uh, we'll see you at the game if you're there. Thank you very see much. See you tomorrow.